What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 4, coming on the back of back-to-back -back defeats, uh, both in the Premier League and in the FA Cup third round to Brighton as our progress ends there. Uh, today we're going to get through loads more games in the Premier League and try and bounce back and we'll also wrap up the trance window too where I have decided we're going to sell Django Uatara to Wolves. Uh, Gary O'Neill of course worked with him under Bournemouth, he now wants to take him to Molyneux and if you look at the stats of Uatara here, he's barely played. It's so hard to get him in a team because we've got so many great offensive pieces. Jack Clark has just come in and made a, an amazing impact, being one of our players of the season. We've got Semenya, we've got Romain, we've got Cliver. Sinistera has gone down, but Tav is there as well. So I, I, I think for Uatara, he wants more game time. He's unhappy right now. And working with a former manager in Gary O'Neill, this makes sense. So we'll ask the former Cherry manager if he'll meet 8.5 mil and he accept that straight away. So yeah, they've got previous work together and um, yeah, he'll probably get more game time there. It's struggling Wolves at this point in the save than he would here at Bournemouth in a stacked team of great wingers. And there we go, Django off to rejoin his former manager at Molyneux. If you've not seen it, by the way, he's only scored one goal for Bournemouth, but it was a beauty. It was against Spurs in like the last minute last season. Limbs in the away in North London. It was class, man. Definitely worth a watch. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, the limbs in the away end were brilliant from the Bournemouth fans, to be fair, as well, for a massive win there. Um, but yeah, as Uatara goes, our budget now 8.5 mil. To be honest, I don't know if we'll look to reinvest that money because... Right now, I'm happy with the side. Like, yes, we just lost back to back. Yes, we're out of the FA Cup. But whilst we do have what you call a small squad, we don't need a big squad. Like, we're not in Europe. We're now out of both cup competitions. We've got 18 games to go in the league. But it's not going to be any fixture congestion between now and the end of the season due to the fact we're only in one competition. So I, I think personally, I'm going to keep the side as it is and just let the money carry over. Right, first game today, uh, Liverpool at home as you guys get back to winning ways after back to back losses and keep on pushing for those European places. Come on, you cherries. Easy, easy, easy. Salah. Great tackle, Lloyd Kelly. And away we go. Still deadlocked at 0 0. You know, I haven't had a single offer for Lloyd Kelly yet. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. But if, if no bids come in, I must say, then post January, I might actually extend his contract. This is a nice build up here as well. I, I see you, Kirk, as I see you. Wonderful build up. Oh, it's gone in! Andy Robertson trying to clear it at the back post, puts it past his keeper. And Bournemouth have the. That's one of those really dangerous deliveries. And, you know, when, when you're a junior footballer, you're also. You're often talked about this. When you're down that byline, you're probably not going to squeeze it in from that angle. So just belt it into the six yard area. Hope for a deflection, hope for a scramble, hope for something. And if a defender's got a man behind him, he's got to worry about. In this case, it's Justin Cliver. He can't leave it to chance. He's got to get a foot on the ball, and when it's whipped in with that sort of pace, it can often end up in the back of his own net. It's exactly what's happened. And we talked about this. Luck all bounced itself out, considered a bizarre goal to dump us out of the FA Cup in the last game. Well, it's an own goal here that's given us the lead. Bournemouth in front. And that's one of those moments where it's so tough for a defender, because it's like, you're down if you do, you're down if you don't. You lead the ball, it's going to be a tap-in for the forward behind you. If you try and cut it out, you risk putting it in the back of your own net. Exactly what happened there. And as we lead with just over 10 to go, what a result this would be on the south coast. Danny Carver Howe into the middle. There's McAllister. There's Mo Salah. Nato with the save, but Diaz turns in the rebound. Liverpool leave it late, but get that leveller and then escape Bournemouth with the point. Third game in a row we've been leading and failed to close it out. I have to say, I'm quite surprised that we still haven't had a bid for Lloyd Kelly. Leeds want to take Chris Meffin, which I, uh, I don't mind at all, to be fair. They've had their fair share of uh, Welsh internationals recently. Dan James, Tyler Roberts, uh, Joe Rodden, I think, was there on loan. Um, but, no, he is there on loan. But, um... I don't know if we can afford to lose Metham as, as, as well. Like I said, we don't need a big squad, but we, we still need to have an, enough of a squad, if you will. I might just turn that down. How are Hull getting on in the championship? Because what we could do is potentially sell Chris Metham and bring in... Oh, they're starting to struggle now down the ninth place in the table. Could we do that? Can we do that midway through the season? That's the question. Sell Chris Metham to Leeds, bolstering their bid for promotion, and bring in Jacob Grease from Hull. Maybe. Maybe. That's not that's not a terrible idea. That We did say we were going to go after Jake Agrees at some point. Right now, Huller uh, Huller being into struggle, sliding down the table. Would he want to stay in a championship if he can't get Hull promoted? 
Uh, I have to say, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. That I, I, I might go and do that. Leeds, how much, how much can we get for uh, Chris Meffer? Maybe about 2.5, 2.75 mil? Let's see. Yeah, I think if we can get, let's say, two and three quarter mil for Chris Meffer, I will take that. That'll give us enough of Jacob Greaves, and we still have some money to carry over for the new season as well. Ah, well, I did not expect that. Uh, okay, all right, well, fair. Really? There's a huge gap. What, £500,000? That's a huge cap, really? Oh, well, that's definitely the most unrealistic thing you'll ever see. <laughs> Doxy boy, England manager. Then I've better luck with Mike Bassett. Uh, no, that's definitely not happening there. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Well, I did, I did not see that coming, but uh, but fair enough. Uh, we don't have a bit for Christie. Brighton want to take him uh, to the Amex 4.2. Well, doesn't really play for us, to be fair. Not against selling him, but... Again, I uh, I think for the, for the for the first season, I, I don't wanna, I don't want to make too many sales. That's the thing. I still want to have the team mostly what it's looking like in real life. At the moment, I feel we're doing a pretty decent job of that. Only Jack Clark has come in and Darren Randolph has gone. Oh, no, we're tired as well, I guess. Anyway, uh, following game, West Ham away. Big game here. No wins in our last three in all competitions. The Irons just below us in the table. If we want to keep our push for a European place going, these are the games we'll need to win against a current European team and a European champion last year as well. West Ham away in London. Come on, you cherries. What a lovely ball that is. And Cornette with a good strike. Nato with a save. Chance remains alive. Kudus takes over. And Schick also denied by Nato. Two flying saves in a row. First to his left, then to his right by the Brazilian. And still 0-0. Oh, Schick gets away. Zabani's going to get there. Doesn't. Brings him down. And that might be a straight red there for a clear path. foul. Seemed as though Patrick was going to go all the way. And I think it is indeed a straight red for Ilya Zabani. Yeah, the rules have changed in, in, in recent years for what you call last men foul, but for moments like that, it's it's definitely what you call justifiable. Schick ain't going to get caught. Zabani brings out. It's what you call a tactical foul, you know, a tactical foul. It prevents what would be a certain goal, but we will now play the whole of the second half, a man light as well. Yeah, I can't just get him back to winning ways now. Just trying to close out a point will, uh, will be considered a great result from here. No, ball inside, Chick is there, and this is why I brought him down with Zabani, because he was going to finish that chance in the first half, in the end it's five minutes after the restart, where he does get the one-on-one -on -one and does get the goal, such a great forward Patrick Schick, and West Ham have the lead. What, what did I say earlier about our season potentially imploding? Yeah, actually let me take that back, that is definitely a real possibility from here. This is, uh, this is concerning, out of the cup, going to be no wins in four, three losses in four, but Justin Kleiber says, hold that for This is why Uatara was sold. Cherry's leveled it instantly. Easy. Easy. Suchek. Schick. Oh. You just, you just can't keep this guy quiet, man. I mean, he's such a great striker. He really is. His finishing ability is phenomenal. Into the bottom corner. Double up for Pat. And double for West Ham as well. 2-1 lead restored. Man, oh man, Defen defensively this year, just have just not been on it. And it's definitely showing me that for, for the new year, when we do look to reinvest, we are definitely going to need to prioritise strengthening that back line. Because, I mean, I said it. I said it this year. Going forward, as Jack Clark almost scored a, a second equaliser. Going forward, I've got no problems, man. Dominic Solanke left it late, but finally starting to fire in the goals. He heads just off target there. We've got Clark scoring goals, Clivert scoring goals. It's just defensively, we're just too leaky. I said this year the absolute best we could do with Bournemouth was 6th or 7th. Well, I'm not too sure about that. These past four games have taught us a lesson. Four European sides, West Ham, Brighton, Spurs and Liverpool, we picked up one draw and had three defeats. We're not at this level yet. We want to take Bournemouth to Europe, but we're not at the level of these European sides just yet. And so, as deadline day is here, uh, you see a big deal already there. Ben Chilwell going to Milan. What is it about Milan and buying Chelsea players recently, <laughs> honestly? Another one coming in. Tamori, Pulisic, Ruben, Loftus-Cheek, and now Ben Chilwell. Uh, so that's Zabani uh, out for a game as well. Um, okay. Uh, are, are we... Okay. Are we... Yep. Are we, uh, are we going to see a move on deadline day? I'm not too sure. 8.5 8 mil in the budget. It's it's doable, but if it's going to be someone, it would be Jacob Grews. But I, I, I would say right now, with Hull desperately trying to get back in the playoffs, I'm not too sure about it. I think I might just uh, just let him stay there for at least the rest of the season and then look to bring him in next season. We could go after Dan Neal. 
Possibly, because Sunderland are having a really, really tough year right now in the second tier. So maybe Dan Neal to join Jack Clark. You know, a team right now down the bottom of the table in the championship. But I'm not sure. I'll wait for some bids and see what happens. So two hours to go. And yeah, I think we're going to leave it there for the first season in terms of transfers. Because I, I said it, I want this side to look very similar to the Bournemouth team we're seeing in real life right now. Yes, we bought in a signing in Jack Clark. Yes, we sold to a Tyron Randolph. But other than that, there's no change. And for our first season, I want it to stay that way as well. So yeah, the team is going to remain as it is right now. I, I like it. Yes, there is a slight lack of depth. But other than that... No need to make changes. It remains realistic. It's basically the same team we're seeing in real life, plus Jack Clark and those you Tyra. So I'm happy with that. I'll keep things as they are. The top deals in the end, then Pablo Gabi joining Man City in a blockbuster deal, 72.6 million pounds as he links up with Guardiola. Julian Alvarez is in Spain now, 54 mil move from Man City to Atletico Madrid, and Palacios moves on from Leverkusen to Real Sociedad for 42.7 mil. Deadline day comes to a close. We'll leave the money to carry over for next season to give us a bigger budget for next year as well and we shall now see as it does come in for Christy funny enough Crystal Palace we shall see what didn't even know he was being poached didn't even get an email about that fair enough we shall see what we've got from our next three scouting updates where from England we shall continue scouting on these three players here and from France we will continue scouting on these three players here I think this lad Martin Ray could be quite solid to be fair but we'll give it another month Unfortunately, from Wales, a few players have had potential downgrades. Uh, but we'll continue scouting on these three players here and see how they look after another month. So the academy now is currently looking like this as no one makes a cut. Um, the cut. But the best player still is Noah Antoine. I mean, this guy just looks like an absolute baller. Uh, of a, a technical based winger looks so so good uh, but also like the Welsh centre half Tom Payne Hugo Gillet who of course we changed to CAM but also Nicholas Knight the giant his potential now seems settling around 82 to 88 so I love that long way to go in terms of the overall but yeah <laughs> I just I want a giant man it's so hard for me to find a giant who um Okay, who, uh, who who is 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 great in terms of potential as well. Their potential never seems to live up to the height. Right, following game, 1st of February, and let's see if we can bounce back with a win here after none in our last four in all competitions. Nottingham Forest at home as we aim to stop the rot and get a big three points. Come with you, Jarrows. Gives White to El Shirawi, the trickster. Rolling it through to Gio Reyna, scored in the reverse fixture. And scores in this one as well. We can't stop the American right now. As Gio Reyna makes it 2-2 two two against the Cherries. Drills home. And Forrest have the... Okay, this is, this is what we often mention about form, man. It is just so, okay. it is just so, so hard to stop the rot when you've had like two or three losses in a row. Which is why if you do have a defeat, you need to bounce back instantly. Remain. Oh, Solanke's got to finish this. Yeah, of course. He ain't going to miss that one. And Bournemouth have the level that instantly needed that. Needed that massive, massive goal to draw us level. I've got him just as many goals as he's got in real life, but I, uh, I would wager that we're going to see some bids for Solanke in the summer from some bigger clubs, and I don't know if I'll be able to keep hold of him. Oh, has he almost got another one? Only for the Sayers to prevent him. Right on the goal line. Excellent stop there to keep it at 1-1. Yeah, I, I I think we're likely to see bids from Arsenal, Liverpool, possibly Chelsea. And when they come in, can we stand in his way? No, I'm not too sure about that. There's Alex Scott whips it out wide. There's Kirkes. Billings in the middle. Lifts one to the far post. Solanke's arriving. And he's going for it. I love the, I love the reaction there. Far, he's going for it. I'll take that. I'll take that. When you're struggling, you'll take any sort of point you can care to stop the rot. Draw against an informed Forest side this season in the save? Yeah, it's not a terrible result, all things considered. And directly after the game, as Zabani will be back for the next one, we do see that Remain is now going to become an official CAM. He had a red hot start for us, kind of slowed down a little bit since then, but only 25. I have a couple of ratings. I do see this guy being quite an important piece. At least the first couple of years with the Cherries. Right, uh, let's dive into the following game straight afterwards. Fulham away at Craven Cottage. Lord knows we can do with a win. This is a great opportunity to get it here in West London against Marco Silva as well. Right below us in the table, so not an easy contest, but one we should be targeting three points and a return to winning ways. Let's go get it. Come with you, Cherries. There are four European sides right now that are outside of the top ten. 
Brighton, Aston Villa, Manchester United and Newcastle United as well. There is no way they stay there. Absolutely no way. They're going to go on a run at some point. So that being the case, if we want to keep our hunt for European alive, uh, football alive, we need to win these games and sign K. Should have got me another one. Still 0-0, but opportunity spurned. Goodness gracious, literally cannot buy a win right now as Tav gets away. I see you. There we go. This dude is rapid, man, uh, Max Ahrens. Brilliantly placed, uh, play counter. And I ain't going to mess that one up. Jack Clark continuing a sensational first season with the Cherries. Was not going to mess that one up. And a second one-on-one -on -one in a row. Lovely play counter-attack. Aaron's down the right, working it from side to side like Ariana Grande. And a finish by Jack Clark to give us the deserved lead before the break. Right, come on, man. We've we got to go back to winning ways. I'm sorry. We've struggled recently, but this needs to be a win. Fifth in 17. He's, he's been brilliant this year. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, finish Armando Broja just on side. And... It's an equaliser for Fulham. Man, I tell you, man, the, the defence... I, mean, I know I've said it a few times now, but the defence is just awful. Is that a free kick for Fulham? Right at the end, or is that... It is, it's a free kick. Right at, Goodness gracious, the, the whistles are ringing around the away end here at Craven Cottage because we think the referee should run for full time. Instead, he's allowed one last chance for free. If this goes in, I'll be fuming. William delivers it to far post. Billing heads it away. And that is going to do it. That would have summed up this run. Well, we'll take a point, but the winless run continues. None in six. But, to be fair, only one loss in four as well. Life, man. It's all about perspective. Man, the table is so tight as well. Just like in real life, the front three have got a little bit of separation. But fourth place isn't too far behind as well. Uh, and then there's just an absolute cluster of teams here. All the way down from fifth to... I mean, I'll, I'll say personally, 15th, where Brighton are right now. Ten points separating... All those teams right there. 14 games to go. Still in the top 10. But if we're going to stay there, we've got to start winning. Tough one to follow on with as well. Newcastle United away at St. James's Park. They are having a difficult season, but this will be a difficult contest regardless. Can we bounce back here in the North East? Come on, this is the game we end the streak. This is the game we bounce back. This is the game we get the three points. I can sense it. I can feel it. Yeah, oh, no, he put it wide. Come on. I just can't buy a win right now. Solanke puts it off target. Still 0-0. No, no. Sitter from Solanke, man. How did I miss a target from there? I feel like I just said that, didn't I? Wasn't that in the Fulham game? Come on. Precision finishing, man. It, it makes the game a lot harder, but it does make it a lot more fun as Aaron Gordon works it back inside. Or Anthony Gordon, I should say. Guimaraes scores and says, Sod Solanke scoring from close range. I'll finish from the edge. And puts his fingers in his ears as if to say, I can't hear the criticism. Receives it on the edge, takes it out of his feet, right on the 18-yard line, and bends it past his compatriot, Nato. I mean, that, that right there kind of sums up what kind of makes FC24 such a difficult game to win. You might need multiple chances to get one goal. The AI only need one half chance. 1-0 and a goal down. Oh, no, 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 Isaac. Oh, it's just brilliant. Nato with a save with a rebound turned in by Almiron with Kirkus keeping him on. And the Magpies double up, man. I, I must say, we've conceded a few rebound goals, well, today and in the season in general. A couple of unlucky goals as well. We have had a little bit of luck, like the goal against Liverpool. But for the most part, I feel this year we've been quite unlucky with a lot of goals we conceded. And the way a lot of games have gone as well. 2-0 down. And I thought this is the game we'd end a winless run. Newcastle fought otherwise. And it's two for sorrow here at St. James's. No, it's one for sorrow, isn't it? It's one for sorrow, two for joy. But it's joy for Newcastle United because they're now freeing it up as well. The Magpie's absolutely soaring right now. How's it going? One for sorrow, two for joy. Three for a girl, four for a boy. Five for silver, six for gold. Seven for a secret, never to be told. That's it. Um... As Clark finds Solanke and says, right, no, I'm not going to miss again. <laughs> uh, that doesn't count double, unfortunately, Don, but finally got him back on the score sheet. Goodness gracious me, a goal glut today. Oh, it's a lovely ball down the line, that for Anthony Gordon. 
And the former Evertonian gets inside. This should be four. And the free goal cushion restored. Hat-trick for Miggy Almiron. Have not been able to keep him quiet, man. And I've really struggled out there to keep him out of my penalty area. 4-1, free goal cushion restored. What did I say? Our defence, man, it's just too weak. And for next year, yeah, I, I, I definitely know where our money needs to be spent on. New back line. Oh, it's a ball, it's a ball. Almiron, oh, he's just absolutely dominated out there. He's now got the assist for Alexander Izak. It's 5-1. And there are a few clatterings of seats high up in the heavens at St. James's that are going back on themselves as a few Bournemouth fans have got up to leave and make a long journey home from the northeast to the south. Because whilst we've got a goal and we've got one for Dom, and we might get another one here as well, which we do, it's been a cold glut of a game. Defensively, once again, we've been torn open and we're going to lose once again. Seven goal thriller. Unfortunately, we ship five of them. Do you remember when um, Jack Grealish made that comment about Miggy Almiron and he fired back in the best possible way with actions, not words? Well, I, I don't know who fired him up pre-game in this one. Maybe it was uh, Jack Clark, you know, ex-Black Cat, one of Newcastle's rivals saying, oh yeah, Almiron's overrated, man, pre-match. Well, he's just showed us how good he is on his day. Hat-trick, 5-2, and the winless run continues. We are we are really struggling right now. Right, just before our following game away at Turf Moor, three more scouting updates. Let's see how our young lads are getting on. Oh, hang on a second. Ah, oh, that's one of those teasing moments. The overall so good, but the potential is so low. It's basically, it's ba I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's basically the same. Imagine being told at 17, you, you have hit your peak. You have peaked... In high school, Morgan guessed, you have peaked already at 17. That's pain right there. Well, I'll continue the scouting on the top three, but unfortunately the other English lads just weren't good enough. So we'll see We'll see how they get on after one more month. As for France, uh, we're going to continue scouting on these three here. This guy looks all right, to be fair, Gaspard or Bear. Uh, but we'll give it, give it one more month and see how he looks after that. But as for Wales, a couple of really good talents here. Lee Wynn in particular could be fantastic. Right now, 56-74 overall and 83-94 potential. I'll give him one more month, but to me, he looks like he could be a solid, solid right back. Uh, but we'll see how he looks after one more month. So once again, uh, two straight months with no one making the academy, remaining very selective indeed. It's the Bournemouth way. And uh, right now, again, the best two remain the French duo of Gillet and uh, Noah Antoine as well. Still looking the absolute best in uh, our youth team right now. And as we drop into the bar off the table for the first time in a while, this is a game where we need to return to winning ways in Burnley at Turf Moor as we go for our first after none in our last seven. Come on, you cherries. It's just not working at the moment, it really isn't. But again, it's a great opportunity here because with all due respect to Burnley. Oh, Solanke's putting him out on the floor. Can he finish? Yes, he can. These are games where we need to target all three points. Dominic Solanke headbutts the corner flag. And if they're in this run, whilst we've been struggling, Dominic Solanke has not. He's been on really, really good form and he should have had a couple more as well. Bournemouth in front. The question is, can we keep a much-needed clean sheet as well? Come on, this is better. This is better. This is much better. There's Burnley. Look for that leveller. And, oh, they would have had it as well. Had Jay Rodriguez not been denied by NATO. Sprawling save by the skipper. And Bournemouth remain in front by one. What a stop there by the Brazilian. And what a swing this could be because Billing finds Jack Clark and it should be two. And... I know it's cheap, but I need the goal. I need the goal. I'm sorry. I know it's cheap, but I needed it. Clark to Scott, just like we saw away against Spurs early this season. And the Cherries double up at Turf Moor. Need this. Goodmanson, nice ball through. Zeki Amdouni shoots and scores. And whilst the run of games without clean sheets is going to continue, well, we've got 25 minutes to make sure we don't. 28 minutes to make sure we don't throw away the three points as well. Okay, clean sheet's gone. Frustrating, but most important thing is we close out this victory. So I get a bit nervous now. I just surrendered a cheap corner. And this, this is when you know a team is really struggling. When they're trying to grind out a one-goal victory against a side that they were massive favourites against. From 2-0 down, blowing it to 2-2. This has summed up Bournemouth's run, man. I cannot buy a win. My defence all over the place. Absolute bottle job in Burnley. 
It's Solanke. As it blocked, Cliver blocked. Clock! Jack Clark! Come on! Ball the back in front. And it's the kid with the rescue or a turf more. It's a lucky goal, but we'll take it. And this will wrap it up and give Bournemouth their first win. Come on! After none in seven. Left it late, almost blew it from two goals up. But Solanke and Clark, our two top scorers, and let's be honest, two players of the year have bailed us out. Bournemouth will leave Burnley with the three points and finally return to winning ways at Turf Moor. Thank goodness for that. Right, let's do one more game today because a win against Sheffield United could put us back in the top 10. And just before we do that as well, um, I have got a player conversation here from Kelly who says, Boss, I feel I've made some great progress lately. Thinking about what I'm contributing to the team at the moment, I'm sure I should be on better wages now. I'd really appreciate it if you could fix some time to sit down with me and my agent and take a look at the contract. Um... I'm really surprised by this, but I said with Kelly, we were going to let him go on a free, like what is most likely going to happen in real life. You know, him moving to possibly Liverpool, Spurs, Juve, Newcastle United. Nobody's put, nobody's put a contract in. No, like clubs right now can put a contract in and sign on a free. Nobody's done it. So I, I think I'm going to keep him. After the game against the Blades, I think I'll sit down with him and extend that contract. He's a good squad centre half, if not a first teamer right now. And um, I'm stunned that no one's put a bid in. That's crazy. Right, yeah, final game. Uh, Sheffield United at home. Where a win will put us back in the top ten and keep us in the hunt for a European place. Let's get back-to-back -back wins the first time in God knows how long. Come on, you cherries. Gustavo. Hamer. Nice ball through. Jaden Bogle. Oni McBurney. Offloads. Carzalenia shoots. Scores. And the Blades take a shock lead on the south coast. NATO's run of games without clean sheets will continue. And it's the Spaniard who fires Sheffield United in front. Just had a big win at Turf Moor, and now we're at home in the game. We should definitely target three points and we're a goal down. Yeah, it's just been that sort of second half of the season thus far for the Cherries. Just cannot, cannot get it sorted. Zabanyi. Tav. Slanky, go left. Great ball. And Dom takes his time and drills in the leveller. We're going to miss that. 15 minutes to find a winner. Jaden Bogle shut down by Kirkes, and I think that is going to do it. Bournemouth's wait for a win at home is going to continue. We've definitely stopped the rot now. Only one loss in our last five games. Not bad, but it is worth pointing out only one win in our last nine. Not good whatsoever. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Career, guys. So big thank you for watching. I enjoyed it. If you had then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next one. Aim to keep our slim European dreams alive. We'll push for a top seven place in the penultimate episode of season one as we'll get towards the end of the campaign. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.